with me. Let me grab her bio. So I always do. But come on in, y'all. Share, share, and share some more. If you're joining me over on the Hers Life Coaching page, hey, y'all. If you're joining me over on Twitter, hey, Twitter people, we love you. So come on in, y'all, and let us know where you're joining us from, what city, what state, what country, what universe, planet, wherever you are. Come on in and let us know where you are joining us from. Come on in, make your presence known, people. We want to see you. We want to hear you. And we want you to enjoy this interview. Y'all know we about to cut up. OK, so <laughs> so let me let me bring her on in here, y'all. Hey, 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 Christine. Good evening, ma'am. Thank you for joining us. Let me add her to the stream, y'all. It is none other than Coach Tracy Hayes, y'all. She's in the back. Hey, Coach Tracy. <laughs> hey, Coach. How are you? Can you hear me? We can hear you fine. <laughs> Looking good and everything. So let me read her bio, y'all. Her bio is as follows. Sergeant Major, Minister, Lady, Prophetess, Coach Tracy Onassis in Low Hayes was reared in the small town of Pine City and Holly Grove, Arkansas. She is an honor graduate of Holly Grove High School. Come on through. Um, she continued her studies at Phillips County Community College and the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff, where she obtained a Bachelor of Arts in Mass Communications. Well, come on, communications. Tracy enlisted into the Arkansas Army National Guard as a private prior to her high school graduation. Come on, whoa. And served for 28 years. Sergeant Major Hayes was deployed to Iraq in 2004 and 2008. Pro providing logistical support to the 39th Infantry Brigade. Come on, infantry! The veteran soldier has numerous awards to include the Army Good Conduct Medal and Meritorious Service Award. She has numerous coins to include the State Sergeant Major's coin for her support during Hurricane Harvey. Coach Hayes is also a licensed, ordained minister who has served in various roles, positions within the church, Coach Hayes serves, currently serves on the ministerial staff at Kingdom Builders Ministries, y'all, international. She also travels the state facilitating and speaking to various groups. Y'all better hit her up for some speaking engagements. She is currently pursuing a master's in Christian education. Whoop, whoop. Coach Hayes assists her husband in his transportation services. I hope I didn't skip him over. Oh, no, I didn't. Uh, Coach Hayes has used her nonprofit, Ladies of Grace, to provide back to school supplies, snacks, coach, and etiquette classes. Y'all, she do etiquette classes. Oh, I'm going to talk to you. And book scholarships to youth in her community. Coach Hayes is a member of the North Little Rock UAPB alumni chapter, the Holly Grove Homecoming Club, and the Holly Grove VFW. While Coach Hayes, who is just recently named Female Volunteer Veteran of the Year, has many accomplishments, she considers her family to be her greatest accomplishment. She is married to Pastor Cedric Hayes, and they reside in Arkansas. Since retiring, she spends her time relaxing with her husband and Siamese cat. Y'all, she said, don't forget her fur baby. Don't forget um, her baby. Very <laughs> audiences traveling and spending time with family and friends. Ladies and gentlemen, none other than Coach Tracy Hayes, the lady, the woman with many hats. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Coach the Coach, Sergeant Major. <laughs> Thank you for having me, ma'am. But I, I, I mean, I, I can't talk compared to you. You are the woman of all the hats. <laughs> <laughs> It takes one to know one. So <laughs> that's how she can keep up with me, y'all. She got those hats on, too. Yes. But we're going to jump right into this, Tracy. So tell the people a little bit more than what I just said, just about yourself, stuff that was not on your bio. OK, well, I am from a small town, uh, born and bred from Holly Grove, Arkansas. And I'm very, very proud of that. I am the only girl with a bunch of boys. Okay. <laughs> uh, and I ended up joining the military because, of course, it was a part of my family legacy. I guess something about me that people probably don't know is that I love sports. Not so much playing it as of now, but I really... <laughs> Why are you looking like that? <laughs> I'm not a sports person. <laughs> <laughs> 
I love I love sports. And another thing that people probably don't know is that I am um I guess you could say co-host uh prayer partner on a group on Facebook uh uh called uh prayer on the patio. We meet every single morning. So I'm busy, although I don't get up and go to work work every day. <laughs> All right. Well, amen. So she, y'all look, she say prayer on the patio. I have never heard of that. Is, is that something you came up with or how did no, that even I, come about? I cannot take, I cannot take credit for it. It is a group. The group's name is uh, Black Women Who Love Outdoor Living Spaces. And it was created by Terry O. Page. Uh, and under that, some things transpired and it ended up having a group and I volunteered to kind of like help in the background. And the next thing I know, I'm like helping her every single morning. So I've been doing that for a while now and it's it's a good experience. But if you're in the patios and, out, and things outdoors, I mean, you can check it out. And uh, basically, okay. I'm not going to I'm not going to segue, but you could be making some money with your patio. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> So y'all go to the patio, okay? Y'all better start some stuff. See, this is what I'm saying. It is just Please. so creative, creative. Like people be trying to find places and spaces, and they be like, "Listen, I'll be out here and be doing some stuff on my balcony, y'all." Yes, yeah, <laughs> out here yeah. on the balcony. But we are so excited to have you on here. I am. Hey, Miss Connie, we see you, ma'am. Thank you for joining us. And y'all share this in your groups because this is going to be so so good. So share this in your groups. Um. Here's something I do want to ask. Yes, what is it? Because a lot of people, um, because that wasn't in your bio, but now they know uh, <laughs> that you are a certified life coach. A lot of people don't 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 get that, but you're a certified fight life coach. And so I know one of the things that I normally ask is what makes your coaching unique from someone else's coaching. But I want you to tell us, number one. What made you want to get in the coaching course? And then how are you utilizing that to make an impact in your community and with your, your ladies? Okay. I don't even know if you recall, but I was actually a year late getting in your course because when I reached out to you the first time you were in the field. <laughs> and so I ended up and, and I was like, well, I'm not sure if I'm going to do that. And then it came back around a year later. And when I reached out to uh, Evangelist Robin, someone who I love, love dearly, she was like, yes, girl, you better do that. And so she was <laughs> like, matter of fact, I'm about to drop everything and call her right now. But what a lot of people don't know is that I actually uh, was going to uh, be a coach many, many years ago, like it was not even as popular as it is now. And I had signed up for one of those really fancy smashy classes or whatever. <laughs> but uh, we ended up, our state ended up getting deployed. And then when we had to write about that, I got to thinking, I was like, they never did give me my money back. <laughs> but I ended up signing for the, for signing up for the course, but I, I ended up getting deployed. And so after that, some other things came about and I just kind of got away from it. But mentoring and, and, and encouraging is something that was, I was born with that gift. It's, it's, it's something that God gave me. So the, the paper just a little, just is confirmation for what God already put in me. And I think one of the things that probably makes me unique when it comes to, uh, well, I wouldn't say unique, but uh, relatable when it comes to uh, coaching or mentoring is that yeah, relatable well, is unique these days. Yes, yes, and 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 that I have been where uh, a lot of the young ladies or even sometimes older women that I assist, I have been in their shoes and I'm able to um, uh, sympathize, empathize if and if I'm not in a position to sympathize and uh, I can be tough, <laughs> but 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 yet uh. Nice. <laughs> good, good. Um, so how does how does the the military um and that coaching thing mesh together? Because like you said, you can be tough and, and that's me too. And and sometimes I have to catch myself because when I yes. went my first I was enlisted, you know, before I came on to the officer side. And so sometimes I fall back on that enlisted and I have to remember I'm not the enlisted person anymore. I'm the exactly. officer and I'm, and I'm the chaplain. So, you know, I have to I can't be tough the way <laughs> I want to be tough, even though I'll be wanting to say, listen, but how do how does that that military background um, come into play 
and 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 you utilize the coaching and the military piece you, together. You you hit it because I'm like you know we're like we're giving an order and we're moving, and and the only time there's any you know back and forth or anything going on is if there's some 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 bumps or some logistics that need to be be worked out. So I have to constantly remind myself, you're dealing, no offense to the people that are listening, but you're dealing with civilians, not soldiers. Because for, for once a soldier, always a soldier. And I started at 18. So I mean, it's for I, it's forever who I am. And they're like, well, I, I didn't get that because I'm like, because of what? And I'm like, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> So I have I have to bag back sometimes and, and, and my, my new thing for 2022 has been extend some grace. Extend some grace. And so that I have it's probably more me than it is them. <laughs> Slow down, Tracy. Don't don't scare the people. <laughs> don't and, scare and, them away. I think, that, I think that's what makes your I think that's what makes your your coaching unique because some people need some people need that and then other people need this right here, like, uh, uh-uh. uh, no, I know what you say. I know what you not the excuse, not none of that. So you know what I'm saying. So yes, you extend grace, and you and you extend grace um, to the point of where you say, okay, I'm extending grace, but I'm also going to hold you accountable to what it is you say you're going to do. Because eventually, you're going to be like, all right, we're not going to play that grace card anymore. <laughs> Monday uh, Monday is the deadline. Monday is the deadline. Okay, Monday. C O B Monday. C O B. Yeah, is yes. is the deadline. So, which it which which brings me around to this. What um what services what services uh do you offer or are you going to offer in the future um on your life coaching side and the mentorship as well. Well, one of my main things is accountability is because I'm I'm learning that a lot of times it, it's kind of like when you talk to your BFF, your BFF really doesn't necessarily want you to do anything, but listen. And then you you talk it out yourself and like, oh, well, this is what I need to do. OK, but I'm not doing that. So I help you with the steps and provide the accountability. So I offer partnership, not not doing the work. I offer partnership to make, hold you accountable to do the work because it's your your growth. Uh, my my main thing uh, going forward, and hopefully I'll be having a conference uh, in January, is uh, I want to do a rediscover me or reintroduce myself conference. And and one of the reasons I spoke uh, did a message some years ago, and the message was entitled uh, "When Loving You Is." Uh, killing me and it has nothing to do with the other people it has to do with the things that we do internally and I can only speak about being a woman because that's the only thing I've ever been is a woman and I know a lot <laughs> and so I know a lot of times we are find ourselves is like you know like even when we when we say well you know introduce yourself or whatever we're going to make sure we say I'm a wife I'm a mother but no I want to know who Tracy is I want to know who who Karen is what makes you happy and then we'll say well if my family is happy then I'm happy yes that's true but what makes you happy? What are your what are your dreams? What did you put down like I did some 20 years ago? And now you want to pick that very thing back up. So I want I want to be able to help people to realize what that vision is and to help them to see that it is it's possible, regardless of the age. Yep. Be- because like you said before, because I'm telling you, when you said hold people accountable and, and you gonna do the work, I'm just coming to offer you the solution to the work. I felt the wind of God on that. You hear me? Uh-huh. All up in here. I just the Holy Ghost. Because that's what you told us. <laughs> Thank you. Because that it is like, and, and and I think sometimes people get that misconstrued when it comes to a coach. And I think that's why yes. they a lot of people don't don't get what coaches do because they think you get a coach. Okay, cool. I'm gonna tell my coach what I want done, and the coach gonna do it. No, a coach is just that. It's a coach. Think of it as sports. I'm on the sideline. I'm giving you the plays. Yes. Okay. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm showing you the plays, the direction you need to go. And here's your offense and here's your defense yes. and all this good stuff. I'm not a sports person, people. So whatever. Um, You're doing a little bit. A little bit. Okay. That I know that the coach ain't the one playing. That's right. 
the coach that's already right. played. Okay, now he's showing you how to play and he's giving you the tools to play. And that's what a coach does. The coach gives you the tools and the strategies to build because if I build it, it ain't yours. It's mine. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and Absolutely. so when it comes to that, um, I think I think sometimes we 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 can often um miss the fact that a lot of the people who are looking for coaches, especially in our age group, in our mm-hmm. age range, we think and, and I have to catch myself and I'd be like, now you know better. Now you know you could, but sometimes they don't because they never they never were taught certain things. Mm-hmm. And a lot of them, you know, didn't have the, the educational background and a lot of things that we did because I'm what I'm seeing a lot. And I'm going to ask you if you're seeing this, what I'm seeing a lot when it comes to some of the, the more seasoned uh, women and men that I coach. It's like all they knew was having kids and, and raising the family and cooking and cleaning. They didn't have these outside experiences. So is, is that something that you see a lot on your side? That is very, very true. I just want to give a quick shout out to uh, my pastor, Adrian Tab. My husband is probably watching, but I'm trying to maneuver between this phone and this laptop. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I I was working with, uh, I guess I would consider her to be a mother figure. and, And that's her whole purpose in life is that she takes care of everybody. And what's so I guess the oxymoron or the elephant in the room is that when I say gifted in many areas, and then it's like when it's time for her to do what's left for her, then she really is burnt out and have no energy. And so we were talking one day and I was like, let's just have a, let's just talk this out. That's my thing. Let's just talk this out. And I was like, you do realize that you're getting older and the pandemic has taught us that time is not waiting on us. And if you want to fulfill some of these things, these dreams, and these will be, uh, you know, life lessons and legacies that you can leave to your children and your grandchildren, when are you going to work on your dreams? And she was like, oh, my God, why are you talking to me like that? But I mean, I wasn't forced on anything. I, it was just thought provoking. And I was like, I have something to tell you that's going to be really hard. I was like, but you're going to have to embrace the word no, even in ministry. When to God, when to God, <laughs> I, feel it. I felt it over here, even in ministry. Hello, uh, pa- Pastor Hayes, I see you, sir. <laughs> Your husband is on. <laughs> awesome. Wanted, wanted to acknowledge him. <laughs> awesome. Hey, Figo, he's coming home with Denter. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Elder Davis, I see you as well, one of our his team members. Um, thank you for supporting. And I thought I saw, um, who else did I see? Oh, Tavina. I saw Evangelist Tavina Dorsch was on here and one of our ment- one of our mentees, one of our first uh, junior mentees. Well, now she's an adult, but she was one of our first junior mentees is Adasia. James is on here, too. So, hey, Adasia, thank you. Hey, but, Adasia. but like you said, it's that word. No, saying yeah. no, I keep telling people no is anointed. Hallelujah. You spell the word anointed. No is right in the middle. Right in the middle. It's right in the middle. And sometimes when you get right to a point with some people right in the middle of some stuff, sometimes you have to just say, you know what? No. And as a coach, you have to be able to do that. And I think um, with with some of the ladies who came on, on board, that was one of the things I had to work out with them. And they were just like, if I say no, what? The world is not going to end. Nothing bad is going to happen if you say no. You're going to get peace when you say no. So here, yes, here's my thing. Um, was it hard for you to say no? Now, I, I'm not speaking from the sorry major because as the sorry major, I already know because my CSM right now, he would say no in a second. But when it comes <laughs> to, to the coach, to the minister in you, to the prophetess in you, um, sometimes when it when you really want to say yes, but you like, mm, I mean, do you do you go back and forth with that? Uh, so, sometimes I do two uh, funny, funny stories. And ironically, the lady that I was talking about, she is a minister. Uh, funny story today. <laughs> Pastor Tab was like, uh, could I get you to uh, do me a favor? I, I said, what is it? I did not say yes or no. And, <laughs> and he's also a life coach. So he just burst out laughing. He was like, I like how you didn't say yes. <laughs> Then he repeated it again. I still said, what is it? 
<laughs> what is it? But I remember one time um, I used to work for DHS and I was, it was coming to the close of the day coach. And I just kept getting, well, can you do this? Can you bring this home? Can you stop and do this? Can you pick this up? Then the coworker was like, can you help me with this? And I don't know. It was like something broke in me. And I said, I cannot do anything else for anybody else today. I'm out of yeses for, for today. And it was at that moment in time that I, that I got the epiphany for me that I can't be all things to all people and that I can't do everything. Even though my kids say my boys swear I wear an S on my chest and I embrace that, but I cannot do that. And so I have to live a life that's an example to others by saying that and that it's okay to say no, it's okay. Sometimes I haven't done it recently, but you may see on my Facebook page, it may just simply say pause. And for the people that know me, they know but that means today I got nothing. And that's my thing. I got nothing. I simply put unavailable. <laughs> yes, you, yes, you do. You inbox us and say, hey, for the next three days I'm resting. It's Netflix and chill. Y'all call me Friday. Call me. <laughs> That's it. Chaplain is unavailable. Okay. And we know when you get back because it'd be like, shoo, 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 shoo. You be on it. But, uh, but also, I wanted to also state hey, that uh, Elder Davis that's on here with us, he's also one of our male life coaches uh, from the HERS team, too. He's one of the, his team members, but he went through the HERS life oh, coaches. Awesome. Awesome. So we do have men that come through. Yes. And so on segue right into that. <laughs> <laughs> always ask the coaches who come on that have taken my coaching course um number one how did you like the course number one and then number two how was it different from any other course you've ever taken um and just tell Ooh. people just a little bit about it i know come on sorry mate don't <laughs> so this is the truth truth everybody the whole class was about to <laughs> The whole class was about to quit. And Pastor Star and Pastor Adrian on here, I was like, hey, maybe this is not my calling in life. I just don't know. <laughs> and it was so funny because, of course, there are other ministers and evangelists and, you know, lay ministers and stuff <laughs> in the course. And I don't know. But one day she just got on you guys and she was like, we can do this. We are going to press through. And everybody was like, how did you know? She was, You were like, I felt it in the spirit. I was like, look. It's about day three, and this I, I'm, you can keep the money. <laughs> but it was the stretch that was necessary because if I'm going to continue to encourage others to reach their highest potential or at least get to the next level, because a coach or a mentor, mentor can only take you so far, and then you go on to the, to the next level. And I was like, I'm really not a quitter. So... If I quit with this, which I know is something I should have done years ago, it's a part of what God has called for me to do. If I can't get beyond the stretch, then how can I motivate, inspire, and, and encourage others to get beyond the stretch? So it would be some days I would be sitting in this, in this office saying, Lord, I have no words for this paper. I don't even know what she is talking about. <laughs> and, and as a chaplain, I was not about to let the sergeant major quit not no. not she was no. like you know what this week we're having face to face everybody we're we're changing it we're everybody's having a face to face yes i was like face to face face to face <laughs> <laughs> i don't let y'all be on your own too long so face to face <laughs> up in prime but in, in in that i think um because i like to hear the feedback because everybody just sees me posting this stuff about the about the course. But I like to, for the people to get feedback from those who actually went through the course because it's not just a click, 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 boom, no, here you go. No, um, because uh, I think a lot of people say, yes, I'm a life coach. Um, and it's like, oh, I've been called to be a life coach. And then when you come through my course, you find out that I ain't been life coaching. I've been mentoring. I've been counseling. I've been doing everything but life coaching. But life coaching, yes. Yeah. Distinction between the three. And so and, and, this yes. course, now do you have the distinction part down between the three? Oh, yes, ma'am. I got it down and I embrace it. <laughs> <laughs> I got, yes, absolutely. And one of the other things I wanted to say is that I'm glad that your course was not a click, click, you know, uh, 
listen to the slide, click move to the next slide. You've completed module three. You know, you was like, no, you're going to stop in the midway. I need you to write something, submit it tonight. Oh, and take the exam, reply to three people. Okay, now continue on. I was like, this is like being back in the master's program. <laughs> But but it did make 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 the make the distinction and it helps you to stay focused because what we have to realize is that when we're coaching people, it's their dream, it's their vision. And if we're if we don't stay in our lane and 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 focus on our role, like you said, we will be saying, Well, I think that you should do this, and then we'll have them over here baking cakes when they should be candlestick makers, you know. Thank so you. <laughs> Thank you. The cake baking thing is my is my go to as well. And pencil sharp. I was like, you should be you know, pencil sharpening. I got you over here. Cake baking. Um, yes. and, and so it really is. That's the way the course was designed. And and because it's the foundation was God. Um, and so that's why it's, it's one of the top four out here. One of the top top four out here now, um, life coaching academies, you know what I'm saying? Life coaching programs in the Pacific is because it is found, God is the foundation in that. And what was so amazing with your cohort, when you guys went through is I had another lady that says, this just freed me up because I had been doing this, 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 and I was all out of my lane. And she said, with okay. this, it helped me get back in my lane. And she's like, and now I got time to do stuff that I'm supposed to be doing. Exactly, exactly. You know, that's like when I was saying uh, about the, the, the lady, I was like, you have no energy to do these great and wonderful things that God has called you to do and then and we're not gonna go there but just when we stand before god and say well i was a good wife i was a good mother uh i was i was a good daughter i was a good sister and it was like but i told you to to preach to the nations or i told you to feed the community those things are applicable as well and you will have to answer for those things but i was busy doing this or i was busy doing that and i think even in last night in bible study we're christian let me say that we're christian coaches with biblical principles, although we don't preach to you. So let me just go on and put that out there. Put right on too. out there. Put on the show. <laughs> well, y'all are taught well. <laughs> so, so even we talked in Bible study last night about putting your hand to the plow. And so that means that you have to be committed and focused to what God has called you to do. This is no shade on anybody else because there are like some that have been called to be stay at home moms. There's somebody who's been called to be a, uh, a, a trash uh, collector, whatever. I love my trash man. I've written about him on social media. I'm just saying they're awesome. So <laughs> that's your lot in life. But just because he picks up my trash, that doesn't mean he's supposed he's not supposed to be a principal or his wife is not supposed to be a teacher or teach a sewing class. God, now everybody's not John the Baptist. That's all I'm going to say. Some people do many things well. And and I, I admire them. I'm not that person. <laughs> but I, I admire those type of people. But nevertheless, Leave this world knowing that you have fulfilled what God put in you to fulfill. That part, that part, that, that, that's the part. And I think, um, I like what you said about the coaching because a lot of people, when they hear that they are, somebody said a trash man is necessary too. <laughs> I'm saying that. <laughs> La Earta. That's, that's, that's past the star. <laughs> <laughs> show we somebody got to do it all right yes um yes i the, always say i love window washers because i'm afraid of heights <laughs> okay. thank you thank you um what but what you were saying you know uh, about about the 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 principles and being a spiritual and, and Christian life coach, this again is where people misconstrue it when they say, oh, I'm a Christian life coach. Being a Christian life coach means you're the Christian. It doesn't necessarily yeah. mean that the other person that God sends to you is Christian. You Absolutely. know what I'm saying? You're the Christian and you exude that. Um, and it, you're not preaching to them because you're the Christian life coach, because it just means that I have some discipline. It means that I, I rooted in Christ and I will see Christ out on behalf of this person. If it's something, you know, that I can't seem to figure out, I'm going to do the praying. We will say, yeah. you know, is it OK if I pray for you or if I pray with you? And if they say no, cool, you go home and you pray for them anyway. 
you know, but it's and not that do. you preach at them and things of that nature. Yeah. It's just that they know who you are. And if they come to you, they know that, okay, this person has a, a spiritual background. So let me just, you know, be prepared. They may want to pray or something like that. But we're not, you know, as Christian life coaches, we're not, you know, getting them in into the room and let's talk about your goals. And then we go up into the fifth heaven on the people. And, you know, <laughs> it, it's not that. It, it's not where you get to showcase your, your speaking in tongue gift, your preaching gifts and all this type of stuff. It's not. It's where you get to show Christ, y'all. Yeah. And that is where you, mm -hmm. like you said, you're showing the, the, the grace, you're showing the love, you're showing the concern and you're showing the care, um, but you're showing forth Christ in that. It's not that you preaching and teaching. And a lot of people mix that up as a Christian life coach. And that's what they do. They automatically just get their Bible out and just start throwing scriptures at the people. And it's like people looking like, excuse me, um, that, ain't, that ain't what I came to you for. I got a pastor. If I want to hear that, I go to my pastor. Uh, right. Right, you know, right. I came to you for for principles and and tools and strategies that are applicable to my everyday life. I didn't come to you to get preached at. You know, so Ab absolutely, absolutely. That's what I was about to say. Is that uh, we have some things that we're having to unlearn, and I, I'm guilty of that too. Is that uh, prayer is good, and 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 being a whole preacher and and pray every day. For for a whole other group plus my my family and friends and church or what have you, but we need strategy, we need implementation, and we pray that we get that and that we know how to apply it once God downloads that into to it. But I mean, I can't be like praying. Oh, I am so hungry, I am so hungry, and I have nothing to do. Something says get up off the sofa, go in there and see what's in the refrigerator so you can make a sandwich or where's the menu to place in order. I need something that requires some action that requires some yes. forward movement. Thank you. Action is the, the key word. And we always have to remember that coaching is client centered. It ain't you. You are not the most yeah. important person in the coaching relationship. The client is. Oh, it's with the client. Absolutely. And it's not you telling them what they should do. And it's not you saying, ah, that that I, I don't feel that I'm not feeling God saying that's the direction <laughs> to go. you don't do that. You allow them to tell you what they want to do. If it's not something they should do by the time they get to, you know, a certain benchmark, they will see that maybe I shouldn't do this. And then you say, OK, let's revisit your goals. Yes. You know, let, let's revisit, let's Absolutely. replan. But you're not in there and be like, oh, the spirit just told me you shouldn't go that direction. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you learn to speak what their we language. Do it? <laughs> you learn to speak their language, okay? Yes. And yes. so you use your discernment, you know, on with yourself and say, now, God, now they telling me this and this, and two and two is adding up to six with them. I know. They don't need to be going this direction, but this is their <laughs> vision. These are their goals. So I just have to help them plan and let them go until yes. they, ah, yes. yeah, they have to come to the realization themselves and not you something in their head. You, That's you it. give room and you allow the Holy Ghost to do the thing. You know, you invite them That's in really. and, and you, you know, they come in and you start dealing with them. You let the Holy Ghost do all of that. You like, no, I'm coming there because I've, man, when the first time I experienced a spiritual life coach, they were trying to slay me. And I was like, eh, no, not a person. Oh, I can see your face now. <laughs> Dr. Lolo was not having it. So, okay. so with that. Mm. Uh, now here, here's here's a question for you. Okay. How how has it been, and what are some of the things that you have faced? All right, we're gonna we're gonna go right into this um, as a number one African American female or female period in ministry and in business. Ooh, that's a good question. <laughs> Loaded. Like I know. Loaded. <laughs> uh, let's, let's, let's do ministry first since I've been preaching since I was 19. I'm not going to tell y'all how, how old I am. If you don't know, you just don't know. <laughs> and don't be going through my social media stuff trying to find when my birthday is. <laughs> but um, it, I notice a lot. It depends on the area sometimes. You know, I'm in the Bible Belt, and so some things are still as they were. 
40, 50 years, 50 years ago. Uh, I've even had, I can remember in Iraq once a guy was like, well, if you're going to be a preacher, I wouldn't come to hear you preach because women aren't supposed to preach. I said, well, you have to take that up with God because I know what, what he told me. Uh, and, and I know that there are some, even though they, they say they support, they, they don't, they really don't support, but a lot of women coming with, with a lot of gifts, not just preaching, you know, prophetic gifts and stuff. So you want my gifts, but you don't necessarily record, you don't honor the call that is on my life. So thank God for being in the military. Believe it or not, one of the very first sermons that I preached was at my unit. Uh, and there was a, he, I call him my army dad. He's now deceased, um, Sergeant First Class, Reverend Ed Smith. And uh, one time we used to have service at drill, of course. And so one time he ended up having to be busy. And he was like, girl, you're going to preach for me today. And I was like, well, I, you know, I do a little exhort, but I don't necessarily just, he was like, no, you're going to preach for me that, um, tomorrow, which was Sunday. And so I ended up doing that. And, and after that, even chaplains and stuff, would recognize the call, you know, on my life. And even in, in country, I would be a part of the chaplain teams when we got, you know, deployed and stuff like that. But um, you just learn to be true to who you are and don't force yourself. And that's, you know, being, a, I spent my whole life being in the presence, being the only female, being the only black. There were a lot of times that was, that was my job. So when I started getting to the point later in my career where I worked with 10 other women and it was 25 black, for it, I never said anything to anyone, but it was somewhat of an adjustment for me because I had spent so long, like I, like I said, I, gra I got graduated high school, I was already in the guard. So it was a huge adjustment uh, for me. And that's why one of the reasons why I value my military sisterhood so, so much uh, in business. And I will use, I guess I will use my job uh, the same. Um, I used to talk to people on the phone and they didn't know I was black. Oh, I get that. <laughs> I, just from my last <laughs> I get that. Of course, of and course, of course. Up, like, oh, and I'm like, yes. yes. <laughs> and then they was like, oh, but well, we wanted to talk to the lady. And then they was like, uh, the black lady. They was like, no, not the black lady, the lady that was on the phone. And I was like, well, we're one in the, you know, we're one in the same or what have you. But, and so I guess the Lord was conditioning me. So I learned early on to not, uh, to not take offense. And then, you know, I told you before, if I, if it was a class, ethics class, uh, victim advocates class, I was in there and I, and, and I didn't know even at a young age that I would be a voice. And so I've always been one to stand up to say that's wrong, um, it didn't matter the 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 situation, the the rank, or you know even uh, in in ministry, uh, that's not right. That's not you know how that goes or whatever. I you know and if I go to certain denominations and they don't allow women to sit in the pulpit, well they don't allow women to sit in the pulpit. I'm not gonna be like, well hey you know I'm I'm anointed and I'm ordained and I'm called. Hey this is your house. It's just like if I went over your house for dinner and you didn't invite me to sit on the sofa or right. sit at your, your table, I wouldn't do it. So same applies. And I'm not I'm not offended by that. Right. Because it's better to be asked up than to be told to step down. So. Absolutely. <laughs> so, I mean, there have been, there have been challenges and there always will be. It's just the society that we live in. But when you are sure and sure footed and confident of who you are, then you learn to not let it affect you. Right. Right, because that spirit of offense is everywhere. Um, but like you on, on the Army side, like right now, I'm the only African-American female in my whole entire battalion. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. and, and, and my, you know, when it comes to, to female chaplains, I'm it in, in my camp. <laughs> so, you yeah. know, when we go to training, yeah. it's just me. And I don't know if they really, you know, value my skills or if they're afraid I'm going to go sister girl on them. And so they just don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably a little bit of both. A little bit of both. <laughs> and, and the other thing, as far as uh, being a woman in, in coaching, you know, right now, women, we're dominating the game all across the board. So I'm just among good company, and I understand that there is room at the table for everyone. Yep. Sorry, so um, but we, we we are when it comes to the coaching. Okay? But but if you but if you are looking for a male life coach, hey, I promise you, we got some good ones we can refer you to. Yes, so it, sir. It ain't no hating. It ain't no hating. Oh, ain't no hating. <laughs> we we got the brothers and sisters on our on our blue side of the house, as I call it his team. Yes. 
those those men folk in in, in Christ, they brothers in, in Christ, and uh, they they some tough mentors and life coaches out there. That they, they are, they do they do the thing too now. Um, and so yeah, we there ain't no hateration going on. You know, we can refer mm. to those people that say if you prefer to speak to a, a male life coach, and I'm not a perfect fit, got one. I can pull one up and be like, there you go. Because um, it's all about you getting what you need. That's it. It's client centered. It's what the client needs. It's not what I want. And, right. and so that's why uh, when we did this, I, I made sure that men were um, invited to go through this this coaching course so that um, we can have them on on staff as well. Because a lot of people is like, I don't want to talk to you. And, and sometimes it's women that don't want to talk yes. to you women because yes. sometimes we can be presumptuous because we're a woman and we think that we know because a woman knows another right, woman. Right. And, and like, sometimes they're wanting a, a brotherly perspective or a fatherly, or father. you know, yep. pr- pr- perspective. And I get phone calls all the time. It's like, well, I'm trying to get in contact with Pastor Hayes. I'm like, uh, so and so trying to call you. And he's like, what is it? It's a problem. I don't know what it is. Yeah, I, they wanted to talk to you. <laughs> right, it's your show. <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, Apostle Briggs. I see you, ma'am. Hey, Lenise. Hey, Felicia. I'll see y'all. I'll see y'all. But that that is one of the biggest things. Now, in in with um this pandemic that we are yet in because people think it's over we're, we're not we're yet in it, no, it's uh, when, it no, it's when it comes to like an influx of people needing your services or looking for those type of services um have you seen an increase or a decrease well for me we started in we started like in the middle of the pandemic so i can't just uh, I can't say I can gauge it because it wasn't at the very, uh, it wasn't prior to, it wasn't uh, right. post or whatever. But um, I, I, I don't know if I want to say this. I don't know if it's so much the pandemic or if it's the price. You know, we talk about that a lot. <laughs> don't talk about that. Don't hear it. That's going to be the next segue, okay? <laughs> We're going to talk about it. <laughs> Is the price, uh, and I think yeah. that a lot of it is, and and I I honestly believe because again, when you're African American and you female, and if you're in like a rural area, that's the first thing people want to look at is the price, um, and I'm just like, how do you put a price on your vision? How do you put a price on what it is that you're trying to accomplish? Um, and you wouldn't think twice if somebody says, Hey, you want this Mercedes? You gonna this is what the Mercedes calls. You're gonna do what you gotta do to get it because that's what you want. So have you ran into that when it comes to your coaching? Yes, I have. And when I I just want to say this, you guys, when I (laughs) when I say that this woman knows the Lord, she knows the Lord. So Ruth, and I, I think I shared this uh, in the group and then you, but you came with some information prior to me even saying this, but um, I've had people like inbox and be like, well, how much do you charge? And so this one particular person had reached out and was like, oh, you're such an inspiration and I really admire you. The flatter, the fluff. I really admire you and I wanted to know how much you charge for your coaching. And I was this close. To saying, oh, well, I'm going to cut that in half or I'm going to. And then I was like, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my my bottom line. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do my bottom line. And I did my bottom line, which is cheap. Compared to some of those prices we looked at tonight. <laughs> OK, and it's beans compared to what we looked at tonight. And she was like, oh, well, I really like it. But I don't think that that is what's for me, you know, or whatever. But then I'll see you, not this person, I'm just speaking in general, but then I'll see you post your, your Gucci purse or your, 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 yes. Just blew through here again. And I had, and I had to learn this for, for, for myself because I just had a uh, prophetess uh, Claudette Marks to get on me. She was like, woman of God, why you did not come to my uh, budget class? And I was like, because there's nothing you can teach me about budget. And she was like, well, have you been spending your money like you should? I was like, wait a minute. You're not going to be talking to me like that. <laughs> <laughs> But we spend our money on what we want, then we beg for what we need. And if it's something that's going to benefit you in the long run, your family, your community, 
where I'm big on impact. So if it's going to make an impact in your life and the lives of those that are around you, <laughs> then why wouldn't you invest in you? I give, nope. I've, I've given scholarships. I don't teach. I don't teach etiquette classes just yet, but I do pay and partner with others for etiquette classes. And that's an investment. And I can even see it uh, with my goddaughter. She's 13 now. She was a little girl when she went. And I can see it in some of the things that she does now. So that was an investment. I will give to something to invest in others. But then when it comes to me, either I won't pay for it or I've got to wait till it's like the low, low. But then you, there's no value. Hey, Shamika Davis. That's my sister. Hey, hey Pastor yes. Coleman. I see you too, ma'am. Yes. <laughs> the and game. So I'm, and so, yes. And so I'm like, okay. I, I don't go back and forth anywhere because I'm like, like you said, I, we're we going to put our time, we're going to be committed, whether it's two weeks, whether it's two months, we're going to be committed to walk that thing out and to come alongside and partner with you. Even if you say, well, I'm just going to use that as an example. If you say, well, then the, at the end of the two months, I want to have published my first book. Although you may not have the book published at the end of the two months, I promise you, you will have the tools, the resources, the know-how to be able to get it done. So even in and of itself, the money was worth it. Plus, you will discover so much more about yourself and what you're capable of and what limitations or fears you had. And now you you have overcome those in that time. And so it's worth it. And and most of the times when you give it away for free, the people don't value it or don't even value. use it to the fullest. They don't value it. Hey, um, Overseer Sauls, my pastor is on here. I I'm really am on the podcast. I missed something <laughs> tonight, so I think he wanted to text if I really want to turn me in. Somebody said <laughs> Right. But um, but that but that is the thing. And I'm so glad he, he's over there because he gets on to me all the time. He actually gets like upset because because the way that I price my stuff and, you know, and my prices are aren't a secret, you know. And so it's like twenty one hundred for for my my big package. And that's the ultimate package. And it's twenty one hundred. And people are like, oh, my gosh, that's a lot of money. But when it comes to coaching and they haven't seen the program and yeah. the Thing that you get in the program after the program walk away with a business in a box and some other little perks and yes. stuff. Um, yes. and you get that one year of free coaching with me, um, it, it really is cheap. And then after what we shared, you know, tonight in our coaching yes. group, and I was telling people, and that was virtual, and, and all you get is a certificate, and we talking about four thousand dollars, five thousand yes. dollars. Yeah. And people will pay that. And I think what it is, is they get so familiar with you because familiarity breeds contempt. <laughs> they get so familiar with you and they want a discount. They want the hookup. And you're like, no. And I always tell people when you ask your friends for a hookup or a discount, it's disrespectful. Because if let's just say I don't want to throw his name out there because somebody may tell on me, but Pat. Bishop Jakes, I love you. Okay. Uh, but if he tell you it's going to be $400 for you to do this, you going to rob Peter to pay Paul to get that $400 to be there. Yes. So what makes what I do any less valuable than what it is he has to offer? That's the next question. That's it. And you're not That's about it. to get no one-on-one -on -one time with him. I was just about to say you're that. Do it. You're, you know what I mean? You're not going to get that one-on-one -on -one time with him. You're not even getting close to him, period, because his security going to be ready to body slam you if you get too close, okay? So you're not even going you're, you're yes. to get that. And, and so what we offer is valuable and it's beneficial. And, and what I tell my coaches, um, all of my coaches, is any time that you feel like, man, I'm charging too much, I think I'm charging too much. You better look at them certifications that you got on the wall. Them credentials, yes. not come lightly. They didn't come lightly. You work for that. And, and sometimes I have to tell myself that when people's like, man, $1,200, that's too much. And I'll be like, maybe I need to, you know, cut it. And then I go and I look at all them degrees on my wall. And I was like, mm -mm, no, sir, no, ma'am. Right. Well, Shamika's in the comment. She said, you don't get no phone calls, no Thank nothing. You. Not nothing. Okay. And, I'm here, and I'm here to tell you that if your coach provides you with a year of uh, access, 
We use it though with Shamika. That's all I'm oh, gonna yeah, say. Y'all. <laughs> <laughs> they I have that. learned how to do so much outside of the course. I'm like, I don't know how to make my own flyer. How do you put the this? Oh, this bracelet I'm wearing is a result of the breast cancer flyer that we did. Ta -da. But she was like, we're gonna get in here. We're gonna figure this thing out. Yeah, you gonna go do? On, get, go on, log on your computer right now. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm one of them coaches that if you call me. Said, well, I need it. Well, let's pull it out. We're not gonna yeah, wait. Let's take a look at that right quick. We're not, like, no, we're not. We're not waiting until tomorrow. You done interrupted me today, so we're gonna yes, do this. And I got on that Zoom with my bonnet and my and my house. <laughs> She's like, I don't care. Get on right now. No, I don't care nothing about that bonnet. <laughs> my husband, like, what you doing? I'm like working with coach. <laughs> I don't care anything about your bonnet, but but that that's something that I really try to instill in, into the coaches, and I and I want you guys to take that away as well. Is don't devalue yourself, and don't let other people devalue you. And I have to learn that for my own self. And I was like, man, I'm sitting over here charging this little twenty one hundred dollars, and these people out here at thirty four. You know what I mean? Five thousand, and you're not With getting no certification. A third. <laughs> Of what I'm offering in my coaching course, I was like, "No, we got to go back and reevaluate this, Jesus." Okay, yes. going up. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. This year has taught me a lot about uh, what I have to offer and the and the price. And you hit on something that was dead on. When you come from a rural area and everybody feels like they know you. And you've made the mistake of spreading yourself thin for the sake of the kingdom or, or being a, a good person or do-gooder or whatever. That's how they're going to always see it. And, and I mean, and what, I, love Je I love Jesus, but my light bill ain't free. Thank you. I ain't paying for these bills with, with my looks. I mean, I look good, don't get me wrong, but I don't pay the bills with this right here, okay? Okay. But, but what did I tell you when you said, uh, you was like, I, I, I think I, I, you know, with the people in this area, but what did I tell you about the area? <laughs> you said that you are not confined to your area. If you, especially with the world of social media and the impact that we have, you said you, your, your clients could be global. They could be in Africa. They could be in Canada. They can be in Texas. They don't have to be from Arkansas. And Thank then you came back and you was like, oh, look at this coach. I just look at this this client I just got that is paying the full price that found me on LinkedIn, a site that I don't even hardly use. But I am over there and my services are listed. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you're you're not confined to your area. Uh number one, as a spiritual life coach. Uh, you belong to the kingdom. The kingdom ain't just Arkansas. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Um, Absolutely. Everywhere. And, and God has gifted you with that ability uh, for you to coach people within the entire world. And so Absolutely. I'm like, God, you know, because you be on TikTok, you better start using your TikTok for, you know, to pull in clients. You can do business yes. on TikTok. Switch it over to the professional dashboard. Um, but people will see you on all these other places and you have to you have to be prepared and you have to position yourself. And it's a mindset. It really is a mindset that you have to change. And you have to say, you know what? I may live here, but I'm not just for here. Like right. I'm for yeah. everywhere. My clients may be sitting in Mexico or New Zealand somewhere waiting for me to post that flyer so they can hop on, you know, a Zoom call with me. That's that's the the, the benefit of Zoom and, and StreamYard like we're doing right now. I do a lot of coaching yeah. like this um, and, and they're overseas. They're they're in, you know, other countries and things like that. And so I always tell people, don't ever limit yourself to a to an area you know, to a right. region. You're not regional. You're international. International. I like that. Yeah. Our our, our coaching certifications are international. <laughs> Your credentials yes. have international. So you can coach anywhere. So and it, it doesn't have to be, you know, right there in Arkansas. Um, so I'm going to ask this. What do you have coming up um, that we, if you can share, 
know about, need to know about, or, you know, is there something we need to get our hands on that you got to do that you can share? Yes, we are about <laughs> to start working on some stuff. Aren't we, Shamik? Yes, we're about to start working. I want to do a, um, like a self-development uh, workbook to help with some of the things. Because women, we love to write. You know, sometimes, well, yeah, I won't say women because men love to write too, and it's cathartic. So I want to work on some of that. And Pastor Star on here, she probably saying, yes, finally. Because I'm tired <laughs> of hearing it being prophesied. <laughs> About to work on a workbook and possibly an ebook. And of course, my conference coming up in January. And the I'm so excited. Conference. And I'm glad it's January because I don't have no training in January. Um, and I was just going to say that because I have a friend who she wrote a book called Reintroduce yourself and she has a group called reintroduce yourself wow so they need to talk to that evangelist yes. and yes. see about Sounds that good. and see about that but yes we are excited about that so um if y'all want to know how you can get in contact with coach tracy y'all all of her information is is scrolling across the bottom of the screen and no she did not ask me to do this y'all but no, i do it just because that's who i am y'all can tap that cash app Okay, y'all, because she's a coach and we want to make sure that we invest in our coaches and we want to make sure that other people do. And just to show her some love, if God is putting that on your heart, it's not that you have to do, because trust me, we're going to take care of her on our side. But we want <laughs> you an opportunity to be blessed by blessing somebody. Okay, so tap that that's scrolling at the bottom of your screen. And with that, Trace, is there anything else you want the people to know? Uh, other than uh, you pretty much just said it is that, hey, get in my inbox, all of my social media contacts there. My I use my full name. I'm proud of my name. So I use my full name, Tracy Onassis Hayes. That way you will know it's me. I think all of the photos are the same at this point in time <laughs> so that you can recognize me. Uh, and if you need help, help with coaching, with mentoring, or even, of course, I do uh, facilitation. And of course, I, I'm a preacher as well. Hit my inbox up. I'm, I'm approachable. And there is no uh, assist, uh, virtual assistant answering or anything. It's me. It's me. And uh, me and my husband will get on down and we'll be coming to your town. <laughs> Okay, and don't forget the prayer on the patio, y'all. I'm telling y'all, this yes. got me. Yeah, I'm like, good memory. <laughs> over the flashy name with my balcony. I don't know, Bible <laughs> on the balcony. I don't know, you know, Bible. <laughs> what? There it is. There it is. And you know, we'll be there. about <laughs> <laughs> falling over the balcony. I don't even do Holy Ghost out there. <laughs> Don't do that, Coach. <laughs> it, has it has been wonderful having you on. We thank you for coming on to everybody that's watching on the HERS Life Coaching page. Thank you. And for all our Twitter watchers, because we are live streaming on Twitter, thank you to our Twitter people and everybody that's on my page. And, of course, everyone that continues to support the things that we do, y'all, in this, this podcast in the making. So uh, I'm going to continue to do it, y'all. So these episodes are going to be going on the podcast. So I was like, let me just go on and do it uh, so y'all can hear them again but we do thank you for coming on and you can follow Tracy everywhere um, even Twitter I didn't even know she had a Twitter test she told me yes. but on all social media platforms we're going to get her over there on and YouTube. Snapchat and TikTok oh, yeah, Snapchat. see I'm not even on Snapchat but I know she's on TikTok you need them filters on Snapchat honey <laughs> <laughs> on TikTok, y'all. So catch up with her over there. What about? Do you have YouTube yet? Are you on YouTube? I do have a YouTube channel. I need to get back active. With. Okay. Well, we here we go, y'all. Y'all heard it here. That's her next assignment. Ah, I said it. <laughs> I said it. <laughs> From her coach to y'all. Yes. That's her next assignment is to build. Now next it. Friday she's gonna be like, so did you do anything with your channel? <laughs> yeah. Where's your channel? Send me that. <laughs> I can subscribe. Yes. <laughs> Amen. All right, guys. We thank you guys for joining us. Um, and again, if you know a coach or you are a coach and you want to be interviewed, please hit me up. And um, with the information is going to be, I'm going to put it down there in the comment section. You can just reach out to me at my email address, which is hers, LLC at yahoo.com uh shamika can she she over there typing shamika why are you doing all that typing? Yeah, she got it <laughs> yahoo.com ma'am 
put it up there and you can also check us out at hers llc.biz so you can see what the coaching is all about and what the big hype is all about because trust me we mean what we say okay and so we yeah. love you guys and we thank you guys for watching us and i thank um pastor cedric for for allowing her to have this this moment uh with us because we know it is uh late on that side so we thank you sir for uh giving uh giving her to us for this amount of time so now we're going to release her so she can go and be <laughs> white right now okay she's done her her duty <laughs> for tonight with us and so the next time y'all who knows who's going to be the next coach to be interviewed but I'm quite sure it's going to be pretty explosive too. So we thank y'all. Oh, yeah, I got an idea. We'll talk <laughs> Thanks for having me. <laughs> oh, welcome. Bye, everyone. <laughs>